Hello and welcome to another episode of 8-Bit Keys. Today I'm going to be taking a look at this Yamaha PSR6. This was donated to me by Chris Lane back in June and I'm just now getting a chance to take a look at this thing and um, it's really dirty. So I'm going to, uh, first thing I'm going to do of course is clean it up. I'm uh, probably going to have to disassemble it so we'll get a chance to look at the inside and then we'll see what kind of music it's capable of producing and um, maybe I'll write something with it. So let's dig right in. So as you'd probably expect, the first thing I'm going to do with this is take it apart. This thing comes apart a little bit of a weird way since there are several smaller pieces of the case that come off separately. I'm curious to see the main board as the guy who sent this to me said it sounded like a Yamaha DX7. Anyway, so here it is. The main board looks pretty bare. In fact, there's really only two chips on this board and one of them is a YM2413, which is a very low-end FM synthesizer chip. So I think that's going to rule out the uh, DX7 similarity. Okay, so I'm going to need to disconnect the battery compartment to uh, help separate this thing. Next there's this ribbon cable that comes from the main board to the key mechanism. I tried pulling this thing out with no luck. Next I tried using some tools to see if I could find any plastic hooks that might be holding it on, but all I ended up doing was breaking off the side connector. Well, I've never seen a connector exactly like this, but whatever it is, it's not coming out. At least not without breaking something. So I guess it's going to have to stay right there. However, I think I can work around this problem, especially by removing a few more screws, and it will probably help to desolder the speaker. I've also never seen a speaker with a center ground wire like this. Uh, that's really odd, and I have no idea what its purpose is. It will also help to desolder these two ground wires. Okay, so leaving the ribbon cable connected, I turned it over, and I do have access to this piece here, which is what keeps the keys held in place. So I should be able to unscrew all these screws and remove the keys. Unfortunately, I hit another snag. Even with the screws removed, this piece does not want to come off. It appears snapped in place, but when I tried to pry it out, I ended up cracking the plastic in a few places. So. Apparently this was not meant to ever come apart again. So at this point, foiled by two irritating problems, I'm just going to clean the keys right here where they are. At least I can clean the entire length of the keys like this without the bezel getting in the way. But I still can't easily clean between the keys, which I always feel is a requirement for a total restoration. And it won't be possible to clean these areas, at least not easily. Fortunately, it won't be visible when it's reassembled. On the bright side, you can see a huge difference between the keys I've cleaned and the ones I haven't done yet, because I've obviously only cleaned from here down. Okay, so the keys are, for the most part, clean. Now I'm going to turn my attention to this board here. I think this should be easy to remove, and um, then I can clean these nasty switches on the other side. So I'll start by removing these screws, and there were quite a few holding that board down. So, Okay, so let's lift this thing off. At this point, it's a good idea to take a still photo of how everything is positioned here. I'll lift off these pads, and these are really dirty too. It's also a good idea to take another photo of the arrangement of all of the colored buttons. Otherwise, I won't remember where all the different colors go when it's time to reassemble. The proper way to do this is probably to remove each button one at a time, but I tried dumping them out, which didn't work very elegantly. Now we can get a look at these buttons and see that they need some cleaning. But the main concern I have are these switches. I need to remove these. That will make it easier to clean all of that gunk down in these recessed areas. These are usually just held on by friction, so you can pry them off with a screwdriver. When I took the switches out, I noticed these tiny metal ball bearings and little springs laying on the bench. So I made sure to keep track of those for later. Alright, so I've done all of this disassembly, mainly just to get to this point. Using a jet of water like this is the best and easiest way to clean all of the crevices on this thing. Drying it off, I can already see a massive difference. By the way, I found the date code on the plastic. It looks like this was made in September of 1988. Time to clean these buttons. And now it's time to see if I can reassemble these switches. I guess these little springs go in here, along with the ball bearings. I believe these help give the switch a feeling of different notches in the movement. The trick is going to be to see if the ball will stay in place long enough to get the switch seated. Fortunately, it's kind of greasy, and so that helps hold the ball in place. And here they are. This looks so much better than it did earlier. And the switches are moving perfectly. Next, I can start putting these buttons back in. Fortunately, I can reference the picture I took earlier. Oh, 
Also, these pads could use a little help, so I'm going to rinse them off in the bathroom sink. Yes, these look much better now. These just lay right down, and there are little pegs that help hold them in place. Well, I guess it's time to put the logic board back in place now. Okay, it's all finished. Let's have a look. This looks almost like a different keyboard. I can actually play this without cringing now. So let's plug in some power and turn it on. Okay, so now I'm going to show you some of the sounds on this thing. And I'll start with the piano, but I'll warn you right now, even the high-end FM keyboards can't make a very realistic piano. So it goes without saying, this one won't sound that great. It does help to turn on the sustain mode. I also like this flute plus harpsichord instrument. It has several stringed instruments like the violin, but all of them sound terrible. Except for number 43, which is strings. It has several neat sound effects. I particularly like Comet. And Baby Doll. Alright, so the sounds on this keyboard are really not that great. Um, it's got a sound bank of 100 sounds, but to be honest, I only find about 15 of those sounds to be really usable, and there really aren't any good lead instruments. That, that was probably one of the biggest trouble I had when, when trying to create a song on here, is just no good lead instruments. Also, it's got this annoying popping sound that you can hear. It seems to be worse on some instruments than others, and it's kind of random, but you just you just hear this popping noise uh, when you play certain sounds, and you're gonna hear that in the song that I created here in a little bit, because, uh, I mean, you can edit that out, but it's kind of a pain, so, you know, I just thought for authenticity's sake, I'm just gonna leave the popping sound in there. But if you think the 100 sounds it has on the sound bank sound familiar, well, <laughs> I thought they sounded familiar too, and I kept thinking to myself, I've, I've heard some of these sounds before. Well, it's from the Yamaha PSS270, and I've actually done two videos on this keyboard in the past, so um, I'm not going to go into a great amount of detail in how the YM2413 chip works, because this has the same chip, and I did a lot of that detail in that previous video, but um, these share the exact same chip. Uh, in fact, if you look at the logic board on one, you'll see the, the YM2413. And if you look at the logic board on the other, you'll see the same chip. Now, at first I thought maybe the larger chips would also be the same, uh, because you know all the controls on the keyboards are the same, but uh, the, the main chips are a little different, and that's probably because I noticed they have different demo tunes. Now also the PSS270 is stereo, where this unit is mono. Now the synthesizer chip in both of these, of course, is a mono synthesizer chip, but what they're doing in this keyboard is there's just some analog electronics that are kind of wobbling the sound between the, the two speakers very quickly. They kind of give it a stereophonic sound, and there's a button here that you can either enable or disable that feature. So um, really, I don't consider the stereo to be any big advantage to this keyboard over that one. Anyway, um, yeah, I would honestly, you know, on my toy meter, 
I would probably rank both of these keyboards as just just a hair over being a toy because uh, the sound quality is not that great. Uh, you can see with the construction of the inside of these things that they were designed with cheapness in mind and not necessarily uh, quality. In fact, even though this is a really you know cool looking keyboard. <laughs> um, and it's and, you know and it's kind of big. I honestly don't think it's all that much better than the Square Wave keyboard that I have up here. I mean, it's just it's just one notch above a Square Wave keyboard. But nevertheless, um, even though I've already done a song on here before, that wasn't actually one of my songs. So I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to go ahead and uh, take on the challenge of creating a song myself on you know this keyboard? So that's what I've done, and well, I'm gonna let you hear it. So I hope you liked that. It was actually quite challenging finding instruments on this that would work for a reasonably good tune. Um, also, I wanted to give you a little demonstration of the two different demo tunes between these two keyboards. Also, I forgot to mention this in the review I did on the PSS270, but you can hold down the right two keys during power up and it'll go into a test mode. At this point, all of the buttons on the keyboard will play music, uh, presumably so they could test them at the factory. Interestingly enough, the PSR6 does not do this. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. I wanted to give you a little preview of what you're going to be seeing. <laughs> in the next episode. Now, this definitely qualifies as a toy keyboard, but it's kind of a very a very funny little device and uh, I'm going to do some modifications on it and see what kind of what kind of music I can make with this in the next episode. So, stick around for that and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>